One of the tutorials I think I have done repetitively in this channel is fabric. So I am not going to go too much into detail about explaining what I'm doing because if you if you scroll down my channel, you're going to find so many fabric tutorials. And I really want to take a moment to tell you why I want to do this Harry Potter inspired pencil composition book tumbler that I came up with. David, my sweet little son, he is in eighth grade and he is the sweetest angel in the whole world, but he is not very easily impressed by people or things. He's just, you know, a, he's an introvert and he he's just really not someone who expresses how he feels a lot. So when he came home raving about his teacher and how she loved Harry Potter and how she decorated the classroom beautifully and how much he loved being in her class, I thought to myself, my, I don't think Chris has ever said anything about any of his teachers. So that immediately sparked my interest. And he's been talking about her since last year, but apparently this year he's excited because he has her for a core class or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was just very excited because on the first day of school, she had them sit under a pretend sorting hat and sorted them into different houses and is just one of those teachers that goes above and beyond. I know from having a lot of teacher friends, I know that the way the school system is set up is not in the favor of our teachers, sadly. And so teachers go above and beyond and have to spend their own money sometimes for the decorations in their classrooms or lots of things. So I know that when a teacher goes out of her way to do things, I know it's coming out of her pocket. And to me, those are the teachers that are really invested in love what they do. And those are the kind of teachers that are going to make an impact on our children, just the way she's already made an impact on Chris, which I'm very thankful for. So I decided that I want to do something nice for her and make this cup for her. I told Chris my idea and he immediately got excited. I told him I would turn it into a YouTube video and give him the cup as soon as it's done so he can give it to Mrs. Stokes. I'm gonna put my thank you card in her little gift bag. Hopefully she will come watch this tutorial, but you know, you never know. But if she does, if you're here, Mrs. Stokes, I just wanted to tell you thank you. Thank you for being the kind of teacher that cares so much and is so invested in the children and in what you do. I just want you to know that Chris is not very easily impressed by people. So the fact that he raves about you regularly is very impressive to me and it speaks volumes about you because Chris is a wonderful little boy and I know that he has a really good um he's a really good judge of character. So Thank you, and this is for you. I hope that you enjoy it and how fun for you to get to see the process of how it's being made. I knew immediately what I wanted to do when, as soon as I came up with the idea to make a cup for her. I knew that I wanted to incorporate, obviously, Harry Potter, and I knew that I wanted to also make it a teacher, you know, inspired tumbler, but I wanted to put my own twist on it so what I did after I had one coat of epoxy over my fabric, I came back with some vinyl vinyl pattern paper. This is the notebook paper. It's from Meister Creations. And I am gonna show you how I distressed it to make it look like it is old and vintagey and go with the whole vibe that we have going on here for this specific theme. So the first thing I want to tell you is I used a tapered cup for this, which means anytime you're going to wrap any sort of vinyl or fabric, you're going to run into the issue that when you get towards the bottom, you know, and your cup gets a little bit smaller. And so it may seem like it's hard to achieve straight lines, but don't worry, just because I don't have just because I can't keep my eyebrows straight don't mean I can't show you how to do it on the cup. We're going to use painter's tape. And this painter's tape, we're gonna put a straight line going down the middle of the cup. Now, I know you can see a little bit of that fabric peeking out. That's perfectly fine. This is where we're gonna establish the straight lines and it's perfectly fine that we have a little bit of that fabric overhang. That's not a problem. Just ignore that, leave it. 
Um, the reason it's easier to do this now and to make it straight versus trying to get the fabric perfectly straight is just because it's a lot more challenging. So once I have my painter's tape on both, side, both sides of the cup to create a straight line, um, to divide where the pencil is going to go and the notebook paper and the fabric, that is when you go ahead and you apply your vinyl, just how you would apply your vinyl on any, any tumbler. Now I only apply, I only applied it to like the top half of the cup because we're going to glitter a pencil on here. And so I don't want to put the, um, notebook paper all the way down and then waste the other half of it. A trick guys is to apply heat to the ream so that you can really adhere that pattern vinyl to the to the stainless steel at the top and you won't get any sort of epoxy seeping in now i'm gonna use the dead to me alcohol inks collection from one of my best friends in the whole world jen her name is jen's crafted jen's crafted gems oh my god if she's watching this she's gonna give me so much crap for messing up her name anywho so i'm very proud of her because she has she has been able to launch a very amazing product and sell out every time and i'm just so proud of you boo truly like i'm so proud of you the packaging the idea the concept the pigmentation of these alcohol inks i mean don't take my word for it i had to dab excess off on the paper towel because i knew the colors were going to be so strong so the products speak for the, for themselves Okay, so I took a paper towel because I wanted texture and I'm going to take different shades of brown, which I will link the colors that I used in the description. However, you can um, you can use whatever shades of brown that you want. They don't have to be the same identical ones I did. I think that you kind of get the concept and the idea of what I'm trying to do here. But the reason you do want to use different shades of brown, we were chilling in the park. Sorry guys, I just remembered lighter shade <laughs> lighter shades of brown. Anyway, um the reason you want to use different browns is because it makes your distressing look a little bit more authentic when you've got a little more fading over here than you do over here. It just makes it look like a little bit more natural distressing in my personal opinion. So I kept piling on different colors until I thought it looked good. And then I set it aside to dry and I, I cut out my footsteps, my footstep decals that I got on Etsy. I will absolutely link it for you, but I'm gonna show you how to weed these so that you can use them as a stencil for our disappearing footprints, which guys, I don't know who invented like UV um, color changing uh, pigment, but listen, it's the coolest thing ever. And you're about to see why, okay? So what you wanna do is you want to weed out the actual footprints, okay? Because we're gonna use this as a stencil. And do as many or as little as you want. And guys, the possibilities on what you could do with this, I mean, you could do the Deathly Hollow sign and have it appear in the sun. You can do any quote that you want. You could you could use it for anything. I mean, Halloween cups, it's just such a, it's such a cool product. So I'm gonna go ahead and just weed out the shoes and create my stencil. And then I am going to place these on the cup in areas where I think it's gonna look the best. I'm gonna need some tacket, and you're also gonna need two small tiny paintbrushes, and of course your UV color changing pigment. I got mine at Woody's Goodies. I will try to see if I can find the link because I got this like two years ago, but I will also find you some on Amazon. And guys, I recommend using tacket. I tried doing this in the past with Mod Podge and it does not work the same and I was so stressed out and so frustrated. So I highly, highly suggest just using Tacket. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my footprints in the areas where I think that they're gonna look the best. I'm also being careful not to put them directly where I'm gonna put my vinyl strips because I don't want my vinyl strips to cover my footprints. So I also know that I'm gonna put my composition book decal on this side of the tumbler. So I'm trying to avoid like the top center-ish area. So once I've got my stencils on, you are going to start by 
Okay, obviously I wasn't done. I guess I'm going to do a few more footprints. <laughs> Mrs. Stokes, I swear. Usually my channel's better than this. <laughs> anyway, back to our regular programming. Once you have your stencils, you're going to take a tiny little bit of tacket and you are going to paint inside of the footprints. I recommend trying to stay inside the footprint as much as possible. Of course, you are gonna get it on the vinyl, which is fine, but you don't wanna be sloppy with it, otherwise it'll be hard to peel this up once you're done. So make sure you do very thin coats, okay? Very thin coats, extremely important. So do your first coat and then let it dry. And remember, um, tack it glue stays tack it, so you just wanna wait until it's completely clear and then you can go ahead and go on with your powder. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna just do nice and thin coats and completely color in the entire footprint with your Tacket glue. And then as soon as it's fully dry, you're gonna go in and take your other brush. This is why you need two brushes. One is for your Tacket and then the other one is for your um, pigment. You want to go ahead and take your dry brush, dip it into your pigment, and then you're going to gently brush that inside of the footprints where you applied your tacket. And as you can see, it kind of leaves this like transparent film. You can see it, but you can't. But you can tell that it's kind of giving like a little bit of a matte effect. I highly recommend doing three coats on the footprints. I've had people remake this cup before and they did not do two or three coats and so their footprints were not as vibrant or dark in the sun. So once I do my very first coat, I take a dry brush and remove the excess powder and then I go in right over the powder that I just applied and I go in with another coat of Tacket and remember, keep your coats nice and thin, let the glue dry, and then go in. You're gonna repeat this process three times total. Like I mentioned before, that's what's gonna give you the darkest, most um, best result for your footprints, which at the end of the day, you want them to be super noticeable when they are in the sun. So I did three coats total, and then when I was done, I tested the pigmentation with my UV lamp to make sure that the footprints were fully filled in and that they looked good. And that's how I knew that three coats was enough for me. So I highly recommend having a UV light, a UV lamp next to you and just, you know, keeping an eye on it so that you don't peel up your decals prematurely. And then you're like, oh, snabadoodle cowboy, I didn't have enough uh, pigmentation on there. So now you see me removing it, and as you can see, you can kind of see this ghost of a footprint, but really you can't. It disappears even more under epoxy, but once you hit it with a little UV, boom! They appear just like the pimples on my butt cheeks all the time. <laughs> so incredible. And you can see that as soon as it's not in the under the UV, it starts to fade again. So I went ahead and did that for all of the stencils. And then I epoxied, okay? I epoxied to protect the notebook vinyl and the alcohol inks and to protect the footprints because we have to place our tape again to keep those straight lines. And I didn't want to peel up my footprint pigment. I didn't want to peel up the alcohol distressing that I did on my notebook paper. So just make sure that you go ahead and you do seal it with a coat of epoxy. After that, I am going to take a little bit of washi tape and this is the best way that I can explain this to you and hopefully it makes sense. Find one of the lines on the notebook paper to be your guide as to how big you want your pencil to be, right? And the reason that line is gonna help you is because when you come to the opposite side to do your other line to complete that peak for the pencil tip, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's even. So I always choose one line at the top for my two pieces to meet, and then I, I pick a line at the bottom to start my pencil, my pencil at. And like I used to cut out vinyl, and I know that like Etsy has all these like pencil decals. I don't know that they have this exact pencil. Um, I just kind of made this pointy part up one day, so I just use washi tape. I just think it's easier than having to fire up your machine if you don't need to. 
So I kind of just created the little uh, pointy part of the pencil until I thought that it looked good. And then what I continued to go on with the rest of my decals. And as you guys can see, I kind of adjusted it back and forth a little bit just until I thought it looked even and beautiful. And then I took these diamond shapes in Cricut Design Space and welded them together. And this is what I'm gonna be using to create um, the little swiggly lines on my pencil um, where the like pencil part meets the lead. Um, I don't know if you know what I mean, but you'll see in a second, um, once I start painting and glittering, the pencil will start to take shape. So I basically took this little diamond, these little diamond shapes that created the zigzag, but you can also just cut out a zigzag if you want to. And then I make sure that you're pointing the little peaks of the triangles down. And then I'm taking another little piece of washi tape and just creating a little bit more of a space for where the color of the actual pencil is going to go. So you know how the pencils are, um, they've got that wooden color. That's what that section is going to be. And I wanted it to be a little bit bigger than just the height of the triangles that's why I added a little bit more and then the very peak is going to be the lead so it's going to be the black and what you see me separating out at the bottom is the eraser I'm just blocking off a little section for the eraser and then I decided that I wanted that little metal part where I'm going to put vinyl after we get epoxy on this you know which is supposed to be that little metal part on the pencil I decided I wanted it to be a little thicker so I went in and added a second a uh, piece of washi tape. Now guys, this has always been my advice to you guys. This is the best tip I can give you. Always paint your base color to match your glitter. Um, if you don't want to do this, that's okay. But this is going to save you from having to do two coats of glitter. And this is also going to save you from not having a very vibrant, beautiful, you know, glitter because a lot of glitters. Did you just see that fly? How embarrassing. You know what? I'm not even going to take it out of the video. Her name is Lola and she's an independent woman and she's here to support me. So oh, there she is again. Lola, you're embarrassing me and Mrs. Stokes is here. Ah, guys, I'm so sorry about that. Everybody wants to be a baddie and Lola said, hey, I'm here to be a baddie. Okay. <laughs> you said everyone's included. So here I am. So if she passes by again, just ignore her, okay? She's keeping me company. She's keeping me company, guys. All right, so I did kind of like a brown color for my pencil, and you'll see once you see the color of glitter that I picked, which, by the way, I don't want to brag, but I did mix my own glitter for the pencil. It's a glitter that I created for my collaboration box with My Star Creations for her September box, which went on sale yesterday. And actually, not yesterday, today, like, on Thursday. It's now Saturday. Anyway, so I'm very excited to be able to use it again for another project. So here I am using kind of like a metal, gunmetal black. Like I said, this is for the lead part of the pencil. And then I'm just using a dry brush to brush off the excess. And then I'm going to go in and glue that part of the pencil. And here's the glitter, you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm so enamored with this mix. I am so thankful to Yvette that she allowed me to be fully creative and mix whatever glitter colors I wanted because I'm telling you right now, this is probably one of my favorite glitters I've ever seen. I am enamored with it. Once again, I took my dry paintbrush and I brushed off all the excess, just like you should brush off all your haters. And then I tapped it at the bottom, just like Jenny taps me on Saturday nights. Meow, <laughs> And of course, I'm using this very beautiful bubble gum for my eraser. And now I am removing my little decals, <clears throat> my little triangle decals, because now we're going to color in that pencil part, that little wooden part. So guys, as you can see, I removed that piece of washi tape at the bottom. You can see that white line that's exposed between the uh, brownish black and the pink. That is where I am going to put my metal piece of vinyl. Normally you would do silver, right? Because that's the color the pencils have it in real life, but we're doing a totally different aesthetic. So of course I'm gonna stick with my own color scheme. Now for the actual like wooden part of the pencil, I mixed a beautiful brown with a really gorgeous gold called Goddess, kind of to create the perfect color. I didn't want it to be too gold, so I loved 
that I was able to mix these two colors and kind of create the color that I was looking for. Again, I'm gonna dry brush off my excess and now is the satisfying part. Now we can start peeling off all of the pieces of washi tape, all of the vinyl, because we're done. We're done glittering our pencil and now we can remove everything and it is so satisfying. That's why I did not skip through this part because I wanted you to have that satisfaction. Um, look at that. Oh my gosh, so clean. Ah, oh, obsessed. So now it's starting to come together, guys, and I'm gonna get it under a coat of epoxy. I sealed it three times and then went in with my coat of epoxy. I did 40 mLs, and I'm gonna kind of move fast through placing the decals because this has been a very long tutorial. I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk. I also have to go to the bathroom and I need to go get something to eat because you know I'll never starve. I eat every hour on the hour. So I decided to do Mrs. Stokes, um, her name on the pencil. I just really wanted it to be very personalized for her and hopefully it'll make her feel special. And then I am using this like holographic orangey, diarrhea green, you know, baby poop uh, color holographic vinyl. And I think it goes with the vibe. And you guys know I love layering my vinyl strips, so I'm going in with a, a skinnier line of washi tape. And I designed my own composition book decal on my iPad to match the aesthetic. Guys, I will not be able to provide you this decal, so feel free to go on Etsy and find a composition book and make it your own, or feel free to join my mentorship group and we will teach you how to make your own decals. This particular decal I cannot share or distribute because I do not own the font, so that is why I cannot. But this is why I always tell you guys that the more you know, the more you learn, the more power you give yourself. So if you have not joined my mentorship group yet to learn all of the things that we do in there, then what are you doing, honey? Because all the baddies in there are already designing their own decals, their own vinyls, their own thank you cards. So don't deprive yourself of that power. You know, it felt great to have this idea and to be able to create my own decals and make it exactly what I wanted it to be. To do the bottom, I used transfer foils from Artistic Painting Studio. Jennifer is super duper sweet. I love her so much. I will post a link in the description. You do not have to seal these foils. Once you're done applying them, you can go straight into epoxy. And I did 40 mLs and I was done, you guys. Besitos. Thanks for watching.